Hi, my name is Louise and welcome to my channel where I make content combining my love of fashion, engineering, and product design. If that gets you amped up, then please subscribe down below so you can follow along all my projects. In this video, I'm going to show you how I recreated the infamous Tom Ford breastplate using a 3D scan of myself and 3D printing a breastplate custom to my body. For those who aren't familiar with it, this breastplate, among other variations of the design, were part of Tom Ford's Spring-Summer 2020 collection. The pink one is most famous for Zendaya wearing it at the 2020 Critics' Choice Awards in January. Some casual, you know, it was in the back of the closet. Yeah. and Gwyneth Paltrow gracing the cover of Harper's Bazaar in one. And this is not the first time we've seen breastplates on the runway, but to my knowledge, this is the first time 3D scanning has been used to make them. I'm still not entirely sure how the Tom Ford breastplates were made. I've been assuming 3D printing, but I can't get a concrete answer anywhere. Looking at the listing on Tom Ford's website, first of all, I got a huge sticker shock, but it says that it's made out of acrylic, so 3D printing can definitely still be on the table. Maybe forming a sheet? And if someone from the Tom Ford team is watching this and knows how it was made, shoot me a message because I would love to know. In my investigation of the breastplate, I found two recreations already. One made a mold out of her chest and then used a heat gun to form a thermoplastic called Warbla and getting the final color by spray painting it. The second one was made out of foil and spray paint, but that was more of a mockery of the $15,000 price tag. Before we look forward to 3D scanning and 3D printing, I wanna take a look back and show you how custom garments have typically been made through pattern drafting and draping. For pattern drafting, you start with a pattern block and you grade or adjust your pattern to the person's measurements. You then sew a prototype garment to fit on the person and you can adjust the fit accordingly. For draping, you start with fabric and work on a mannequin to derive your pattern pieces. So here I am placing the fabric on center front and smoothing the fabric to the shape of the body pinning along the way. I then mark this and cut it out into pattern pieces and sew a prototype to fit on the person. A caveat to this is that I'm using a mannequin which is a size 10, but I also have an adjustable mannequin that can accommodate more sizes. You can also add padding to your mannequins to get much closer to the individual's shape and size. Okay, now that you have that little bit of background, let's jump into how I made the Tom Ford breastplate. Okay, let's jump into the first step, taking photos. And for obvious reasons, I'm not gonna use myself as an example, but I'm gonna use the mannequin that I have. So in order to get a good mesh, you wanna make sure that there's no harsh light to create deep shadows, cause that will mess up the mesh. So I went around and took a bunch of photos from all different heights and different angles to get as much detail of the mannequin as possible. Now I'm gonna open up Meshroom, which is a photogrammetry software, which is going to take the photos that I took and create a mesh from it. So let's import images. I took 95 images in total. I'm not gonna go into too much detail of the bottom section. If we press the button start at the top, it's gonna create the mesh and run all of the steps that are shown down below. And this is gonna take a bit, so I will catch you in a second. One hour later, two hours later, three hours later. Can you move it along? I'm all out of time cards. Now that the mesh has finished calculating, we end up with this <laughs> monstrosity. As you can see, it picked up a lot of points from the surrounding room. This is gonna need a lot of cleanup in Blender. But if we zoom in on the mannequin itself, it does look pretty good. I was really surprised at how much of the room was captured. First thing I'm going to do is delete the mesh of the room so that I'm left with the dress form. I then translate the body to the center of the coordinate system. Since I know I'll only be working with the bodice section of the dress form, I cut away unnecessary areas such as the bottom and the top knob of the dress form. The first modifier I add is remesh. Here I show you different levels of remeshing 
At one, you only get a cube, and as the octree tree depth increases, you retain more definition of your model. Then I add a smooth modifier to the entire surface. Since I don't care about the back, I'm not going to focus on it. I then use the manual smooth tool on parts that still need it. Scrub-a-dub-dub, -dub, smooth, smooth, smooth. I'm going to jump in here to discuss the main challenge I found while doing my own body versus the mannequin. I mentioned that harsh shadows weren't good for scanning, and since I have a larger cup size than my mannequin, my lower breast tissue created shadows on my abdomen that were really difficult to scan. To fix this, I referenced the images of my body and added material back in using the blob tool to get the shape right. Other than that, I used the same process for both my mannequin and my body to get the final breastplate design. I can start to cut away unnecessary material and shape the breastplate. I cut out points from the back and then I made a bunch of prisms to Boolean cut away material. And listen, I'm pretty new to using Blender. This might not have been the most efficient way to do this, but it worked out pretty well for what I was doing. At this point, I'm pretty happy with the breastplate design and I'm going to use the solidify modifier to thicken the surface. After thickening, there was some last minute smoothing I needed to do. And now we can export into Cura the 3D printing slicer software I use. Here, I'm translating the body into the build volume and rotating it to fit. I want to make sure the print has a strong base while printing, so I turn on a brim and use auto-generated supports. Once my settings are good and I check my supports, I can send the STL over to my Creelty CR10, my trusty FDM printer. So I pulled this off the printer and pulled off the supports. There's some roughness where the supports connected, but I'm gonna fix that with some sanding. And then I'm also gonna sand the bottom edge since it's a little jagged and also the necklines. And then I have some polyurethane coating that I'm gonna use and I'm just gonna brush it onto the surface. This is already pretty glossy as is, but I just wanna seal the surface. And I did end up cracking this when I was taking off the support, so that'll just keep that bottom edge together. But before I do that, in order to secure this to my body, I need to drill holes in certain locations. So I need to do the neck, the shoulders, and then also the waist. So I'm gonna drill some holes into the breastplate and paint with some polyurethane, okay? This is a close-up of the straps attached to the breastplate. I glued the loops through the holes I drilled and attached fabric loops. The straps that go around the neck, shoulders, and back all slide through the fabric loops for easy dressing. Okay, now I'm gonna walk you through making the skirt. <clears throat> yeah? People did not click on this video to watch you cut out a rectangle and add some elastic. Hmm. True, but what about our sponsor? Oh, you mean cannellini beans? Yeah, I need to tell the viewers how easy they make cutting out fabric and holding down pattern pieces. I just can't do this project without them. Wow, thanks cannellini. 
With the skirt finished, here's the final look. Hi there, I just got back from the final photo shoot and I'm very excited how the photos came out. Definitely very early for me, but definitely worth it. I hope you enjoyed watching this as much as I enjoyed making this project. I'd love to keep making projects and content like this, but I won't be able to do it without your support. Some really easy ways to show your support is to subscribe down below, like, comment, and let me know that you enjoyed this project and want to see more projects. Again, thank you for watching and see you in the next one. Bye.